my friends. Welcome to the Railroad Corner today with Walter. Let's talk a bit today in the Railroad Corner about blue flag protection on the railroad. As a retired railway carman who depended on it for the very protection of my own life, I will discuss it some, but to get a better, more detailed understanding about it, I'll offer you a couple links that you may find educational on the subject of blue flag protection. The first is an article entitled, When Seeing Blue Means Stop, written by Charles H. Bogart and published in Trains Magazine, May 1st, 2006. I include a link in the description below. The second link I offer to those who may find it of interest is Norfolk Southern's operating rule booklet that I found published here on someone's website. I'll include that link, although I'm sure there are other links out there on the World Wide Web where you can read Norfolk Southern's operating rules. Scroll to page 181 to begin reading their blue flag protection policies. So today I want to talk just a little bit about blue flag protection, but not bore you by going into too great of a detail. Just click on the links that I just provided for the drawn out versions. But basically what we're talking about with blue flag protection, um, just a brief summary here, to repair and maintain rolling stock, aka rail cars, locomotives on trains and such, workers have to get on, in, between and under that rolling stock. This places railroad workers in a hazardous environment where an unexpected movement of the rolling stock could lead to personal injury or death. In recognition of this danger, the railroads adopted a blue flag, blue signal protection rules for employees. I'm sure like many other operating rules of operation on the railroad, they were learned the hard way in days gone by. In days gone by, being a railroad worker was considered a very hazardous job. But these days, the railroads try to provide a safe environment as possible. Basically, what it boils down to is, you follow the rules or find yourself very quickly unemployed. There's more than enough I could talk to you today about on blue flags, but I thought I'd mention it a little bit. We kept blue flags on our truck. Kept them out in the train yard. Anytime we had to work on a track, we had to blue flag the track. See, here in the forwarding yard, this forwarding yard here in Emmett Yards is, well, I don't know, it's a good mile and a half long. It's a pretty long train yard. That's the south end down there. So say we were building this train right here in track. We got my glasses on, but that looks like about track four right there. That long train. Say we got Carmen repairing that, or inspecting and coupling the air hoses and checking that train, getting it ready to go. Somebody has to go to the south end of that track and put up a blue flag. Up on the north end of the track, but you can't see in this photograph, a flag has been put up there. The switch has been lined away from that track where no engine can come in and locked. Same way on the other end, the track has been uh, flagged and locked so they can work the train safely because uh, the carbon in the train yard are stepping in between the cars, coupling their hoses, uh, replacing broke air hoses, uh, angle cocks, anything, little minor repairs they might see need repairing, and checking the train for any wheel defects or other defects that would make it unsafe to move. So, you know, if somebody was to come in there and move the train, somebody could get hurt. It's not uncommon for, in the years past, that that was just the case. I'm not going to say I've never seen anybody work on without a blue flag, but I can tell you they were violating the rules when they did it. You got to keep your job, you better follow the safety rules on the railroad. Uh, that's just one example. There's lots of times you would want to use a blue flag. I carried one on my truck and I worked in an outline point job and say I needed to replace, say this is 
over here somewhere is a, well, let's don't use the Inman yard for example. Let's say I'm at the um, Griffin yard in Griffin and I need to put a knuckle in a boxcar. According to the rules, I gotta go to the north end of the track and the south end of the track, put up my blue flag and lock the switches. Many is the time I worked trains here in Griffin alone with nobody else with me and if I hadn't had the track flagged and locked and blue flagged, nobody would have even known I was in there. So I had to protect myself. Uh, train crew might come in and want to use that track, but they can't use it because I got it locked. And uh, I'm under that train somewhere working on it. It's not uncommon when you're doing repairs on a train to get in, on, under, and around rail cars. I've done every kind of repair you can think of to a real car, changing wheels, repairing doors, train lines, welding broke equipment, repairing safety appliances. I could write you a book about the whole thing. Uh, but many is the day I was working here in the Griffin Yard or up at South Yard in Atlanta or Chambly, Chambly, Georgia or Doraville Yard. There was a lot of places that I went and worked. I worked as far as way as uh, North Georgia, Gainesville, um, I could be in the name of all the towns in my fingers that I went to, to to work on and it was expected me to follow the rules and put up my blue flags, uh, lock the track where nobody else can come in there and that's just one example of, of using blue flag protection. Uh, somebody asked me on my YouTube the other day, they thought blue flag meant somebody working on the train. I told you the other day it means stop. And that's exactly what it means. You better not come in there because this this track is locked and somebody's working in there. There are other cases you would use a blue flag where you might have to put up a derail if you're doing it out on the main line and you don't have a switch to lock uh, to lock the train line the track off of you. In that case, you put up a derail and derail the whole dang train before it can get to you. Uh, of course, you don't. That ain't, that's not a very common appearance, uh, a common procedure. You can see this little book right here was issued to me, and it was not uncommon when I had to adjust a spike adjuster or something on a locomotive or adjust the brakes, or I might be replacing a headlight on the locomotive. I've done that plenty of times. Um, any other bunch of other little minor things that had to be done on locomotives. Well, I had to go up on the console and put this on the console of the locomotive so the engineer would know that I was working on his locomotive somewhere. That was the purpose in this little blue flag here. I showed you the little blue light thing that we pinned on our vest. Um, the other day in a video, but today I was out in the garage and I dragged up a blue light. Now years ago, let me stop just a minute right there. Years back on the railroad when I first went to work out there, we were using these kind of lanterns had a blue globe in here. I wish I had a blue globe. Anybody got one and want to send me, I'd sure like to put it in one of my lanterns. But I don't have a blue globe. If I'd have known I was going to be collecting lanterns someday, I'd have sure saved a railroad blue globe or two. But we use these for quite often in the train yard. It was filled with mineral oil, kerosene, and you hung it. This blue flag was stuck up on a pole between the tracks, stuck in the ground or driving it across tie into our bracket. In fact, this flag here has got a notch on it to hang the lantern. Of course, it's not on a pole, so we can't hang it right now. When we disconnect, discontinued those lanterns, they went to other kinds of lanterns. Here's one that was issued to me. 
and it's all nasty and dirty right now, we're going to do a project of cleaning it up a little bit and try to restore it. It's been out in my garage for years. You can see my name on it. It says Parks right there. This uses two six-volt batteries and it flashes uh, blue light. I've worked too many a train at night with this light hanging there, locking the trains from coming in on me. So, when you hear somebody talk about blue flag protection, this is what they're talking about. And the railroad is real strict about using this kind of protection. Um, in the daytime, you wouldn't need the light. You just got the flag out there. And you got it locked. But at nighttime, you put your light out there. That's one thing you have to do with the railroad is work at night. Many is the time I've uh, worked at night. I worked uh, 15 years at the railroad on second shift. Many is the night I doubled over working the extra board, working the third shift. I've been on train on train derailments all hours of the day and night, so. Railroad, when you work at a railroad, you got to work some really strange hours and places. Anyway, that was my notion today, was share a little bit on blue flags with you. And we're going to do a project on restoring my blue light and get it on display here somewhere on my railroad wall or create another corner for it. I've had other blue lights over the years that we didn't save or they got broke or damaged. I wish I'd have saved me one of them blue lanterns like that. A blue globe, I mean. The same lantern would work. I can still smell the kerosene on my hands when I was filling them things up with kerosene or mineral oil, whatever it was we was using. And uh, We had a special locker there at Emmon Yards where we kept them at. A lot of you rail fans out there probably don't ever see the activities in a train yard as to what a railway carman does or anybody working on the train. You see the trains when they come up and down the road and you wave at them and you see them go by, but somebody worked his tail off inspecting and getting that train ready to go. And that's your railway carman for you. I um, appreciate y'all tuning in to my video today. I'm going to conclude this with a adios. We'll catch you later. This is Pete Walpar saying y'all have a good evening.